Good morning, everyone, and don't be rude, say it back. It's your girl, Kali Foma, AKA the Pretty Afro Nerd. So today early at work, well, I was in the restroom, and I happened to go on Webtoons and I was reading Masquerade. Yo, I could not put it down. But let's get into it. Is Masquerade an Afro manga or nah? It's definitely not an Afro manga. I mean, there's no African cultures in the storyline. However, it is a manga because of the format and the character details. This manga, it's not your typical Twilight type of vampire storyline. It's set in the 80s New York City with present day technology and the vampire community, they're kind of like a underground mafia group. There's not a lot of melanin levels in the storyline, but the melanin levels that you do see, like my boo Dominic, ooh wee. But I would have loved to have seen a female version of Blade being either a villain or a partner to the ambassador in the storyline. All right, you guys, so some of the characters we have in this story, you have Victor, the emo assassin, you have the ultimate gun, AKA the ambassador's umpire, then you have a badass detective. It's all great and all, but just having a storyline about black vampires is dope enough, especially a sexy vampire like Dominic. Hashtag Vampire Bay. So you guys, the author of Masquerade is a young Indonesian woman by the name of Rakdish Trey. So I had to know what inspired her to draw all these different melanin characters. So you know your girl had to do my research and I did find that there are black people in Indonesia called Perbumi and Belanda Hitam. But you know, Asian modern creators, y'all could really create better stories if you guys just actually took the time to learn about African culture. I mean, maybe visiting different African countries or speaking to different African locals. Because remember you guys, say it with me. You can't Google the struggle. You just can't. So you guys, Masquerade gets a double thumbs up from me. And that's because, yo, in the beginning, it starts off with Dominic all cool, calm, and collective in the club over here talking about drinks on me. But then, y'all got the mafia coming in, shooting up the club like, bang, 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 bang. Wait, but let me stop. I don't want to say too much because y'all got to read it yourself. Some of the storyline is not safe for work. So I recommend reading this story whilst you're still chilling in bed on a Saturday morning. Overall, it's addicting, it's suspenseful, and it's not cliche. I'd say go out and read it. Good afternoon, y'all. And don't be rude, <laughs> say it back. It's your girl, Cali Foma, AKA the pretty Afro nerd. <laughs> and I'm with Afro dog as well. Y'all, y'all gotta excuse me. I'm a little under the weather and it's been a long work week. So it feels good to just come home, unwind, catch up on my shows, my comics, my anime, which brings me to the topic of discussion. Y'all, I just finished watching the trailer episodes of EXO, The Legend of Wally Williams, and <laughs> it's legit. I caught it on Kickstarter, but y'all can also watch it on Unique Studios' YouTube channel. All right, y'all, so let's get into it. Is this an Afro anime or nah? Y'all, is the sky blue? <laughs> yes, this is an Afro anime. I mean, the characters are Nigerian and the settings in Nigeria. Bump Wakanda. Take notes, Black Panther, real Afro anime creators create settings that you can actually find on a map. Shout out to Granta92. But anyways, you guys, EXO takes place in 2025 in a Nigerian city called Lagoon City, which is actually based off a real city called Lagos. It's your typical Marvel DC technology distribution where you have the villains and the heroes using tech to fly in. Everybody else is stuck in traffic. Y'all straight up, Wale is better than Riri. And that's because he's more authentic. I'm getting more of the Black Iron Man vibes. Not that one. Or that one either. <laughs> but y'all, what really touched my soul is when Wale said to protect my people and put it into the scheme that oppresses them. 
I'm like, y'all, can Wale really fight the oppression of Biafra? Because all Africans know, our enemy is the big man syndrome in Africa. Like, we legit have Amanda Wallers and Lex Luthers walking around Africa today fucking shit up. All right, y'all, so the author of EXO is Roy Okupe, who's Yorba, and he also has a great love for comics. Happened to do, you know, my little research, and I found that Yorba has a rift mythology called Orishas. But for some reason, it seems like Roy keeps sidestepping this part of his culture. I mean, no one sidesteps Greek mythology. So yeah, despite sidestepping some Afro, it's still pretty dope to see African tech heroes. I mean, the coloring can improve and the villains can be a little less Marvel DC influenced, but overall, I think it's still pretty dope. I think EXO is a pretty decent watch while you're on a Saturday afternoon scrolling through your phone. EXO is a Nigerian sci-fi hero's journey with an easy plot to follow. Y'all make sure to go check it out. Good evening, everyone, and don't be rude, say it back. It's your girl, Kelly Foma, AKA the Pretty Afro Nerd. And I just got done doing my makeup. Shout out to Fenty Beauty because I think my makeup is on fleek. <laughs> but, anyways, let's talk about WizKids. Baby, come closer. Yeah, yeah. WizKid is an award winning Nigerian artist. And his first song that went mainstream is Audrey Legba. And it's a street in Lagos. Lagos, by the way. Imagine it, uh, the New York of Africa. And if you can make it in Lagos, you can make it pretty much anywhere. His top song now, which I'm sure you all have heard, is Come and it's about Wizkid being the number one Afrobeat artist. And of course, he's bagging all the baddest chicks. But anyways, Wizkid has released four albums, and his most recent one is Sounds from the Other Side. In both songs, Wizkid, he sings in both Nigerian Pidgin and in English. And I could definitely see his main theme is starting from the bottom, but of course, he's loving life at the top. I find it shocking that Wizkid has been bailing out on a lot of his concerts recently. Like, what's really going on? You have your loyal African and Black fans who've been riding with you from the beginning. And it's like you just went ghost on us. I haven't seen him turning up a lot recently. Is that that sickness that your doctors have been talking about? Wizkid, he gets this much ginger rating. And that's because he's one of the hottest Afrobeats artists out right now. OG Legba and Come Closer are both for the party life. Most definitely, Offset. Both songs, they just put you in this chill mood and makes you just want to groove to the beat. Wizkid, he's collaborated with numerous African artists as well as top American artists. I'd say definitely go out and listen to Wizkid. done hey what's going on everybody welcome to the real nigga hours with your girl califoma aka the pretty afro nerd so y'all i was watching a few tournaments and i came across my dude tasty steve and let's just say he's the dj khaled of commentating in the fighting game community so tasty steve he's a gamer slash commentator oh shit that's what did you see the people sell though the people say, oh, well, let's go. I picked a few of his matches on Level Up's Wednesday Night Fights. And you can follow him on his Twitter at Tasty underscore Steve. So, y'all, is Tasty Steve an Afro gamer or nah? He's definitely an Afro gamer. Well, he's both an Afro gamer and an Afro commentator. Steve, Tasty Steve Scott, lives in the LBC. That's Long Beach, California, in case you didn't know. Dancing Jesus. 